All right. Uh, welcome, everyone. Welcome to the Forge Coffee Break. This is the, uh, this is the episode number 41 of our biweekly uh, break for catching up with Forge topics. Uh, so today we have two special guests, actually three, Rikaku is counting as well. So we have three special guests that will be showing us uh, um, uh, what is new on the BIM360 API for, um, uh, sorry, BIM360 and ACC API for model properties. And uh, with that, let me move to uh, Claire and Alan. Let's start with Claire. Hi. Yeah, I'll, I'll just give a brief introduction into kind of who we are and then um, Alan, if you're okay to cover what the API does, but um, thank you for inviting us. Um, we are from the platform group in the BIM for Construction uh, COE uh, within ACS. So uh, we were formed uh, in November last year um, and the thinking was um, before we had teams that were in uh, kind of product teams um, working on Nucleus and, and various APIs and that in line with the kind of uh, Autodesk thinking around platform thinking and um, building platforms for our customers, it would be um, a good idea to uh, uh, bring those teams together who were working uh, on the back end and, and the platform and the data services and to kind of look to start to solve problems kind of across uh, all of our products um, rather than looking at kind of individual products and, and kind of this uh, silo thinking around um, uh, solutions that can happen um, when teams are buried in product teams. Um, but one of the benefits that we see of this approach is that obviously we've got a number of APIs um, and uh, we uh, that some are, are on Forge. We've got a kind of list that we want to make available um, on Forge as uh, the year progresses. Um, but the Model Properties API was our kind of first uh, API for us as a platform group to release. Um, so for us, it was kind of first time through the process, first time working with Macarco and team, and um, it's been a really good process and we're excited to see what can happen. So with that, I shall, so just uh, as a way, of, I'm the product lead um, and Alan is one of our architects. Claire, let me move to Alan then. So yeah, go ahead. Thanks. Um, so uh, my name's Alan. I've been with Autodesk about seven years and um, you know, my, my role in this kind of project is that as Claire said, I'm one of the architects um, that kind of designed and worked on the index, the model properties API. Uh, we call it the indexing API, nearly slipped there. Model properties API. Um, so yes, I, I won't go into that anymore because I, I think that's the subject of this, well, one of the subjects of this session. Oh, so uh, what we usually do on the, on, on the, on the coffee break is to you know, open for questions. And, uh, but let me first start with you if you have anything that you'd like to share or show. And then we can move for you no know, others to ask questions. And uh, I'll, if you have anything, Alan. Or... Well, what we could do is have a quick look at the um, Forge documentation for the Model Properties API, if that would be a good thing to kind of start with. Sure. Um, so let me pull that up. And I wonder, Alan, as well, um, as part of Hack Week, Peter did uh, the Clash Heat map, didn't he? Uh, if I try and find that demo, we can play that, can't we? Yeah, that would be an interesting thing. Yeah. We, we yeah, also let's, have let's a, give them a teaser. Yeah, Borog post has the links to, you know, samples and GitHub. So let me just pull that link too. Would you like to, me to show that sample, the blog post, Mikako? Yeah, so let me, shall I just uh, put the link to chat? Chat goes to everybody, right? Yes. 
Yeah, so this chat, this link, shall I share? Or yes, I, you can, you, you can yeah. share. Yeah. So maybe I can share this uh, page. Yeah, and maybe Darren can explain. So these two pictures are samples made by Shaodo. This one done like several months ago already when we are still you know, preparing for documentation and things like that. And then left side showed um, indexing API. It's a little bit small, but um, there is a GitHub samples with pictures, I think. So GitHub sample link is also here. We have a Postman collection and then PowerShell core. So this is an interesting one in that you can explore the query language. And then the ones I was showing compared to version. So this one, for instance, is a GitHub samples. And, and then I think this is this is thumbnail and then demonstration here. Here put the uh, the link to the YouTube too. So, so this one is showing the the queries in here in the lower. Maybe you can put it in here. So you see the Shaodong is um, putting a query like a level is equal to, in this case, third floor. And then you see on the left side, uh, right side of the image, it show only the information which has a tag like a third floors. And then the second one, he's showing third floor windows. I'm kind just, of just, behind. Just a question about that, the previous one. So you, for first you index and then you say filter and that will show you the module, right? Yeah, indexing is all about searching and filtering. Mm, okay. Yeah. So in the lower side, the, you see a lot of uh, uh, the filter options. Here you see like a, he's showing a Revit duct. And then now he's showing the length is greater than six. And then on this here, you, know, you can have uh, uh, the how do you call it, Com combination of the filters. In this case, he's using one or and then two and, and then you see the queries. And then the result doesn't need to be in a visual form, but in this case, it's more clear if you show in a visual form. So he is showing this. So this is, this is uh, real time. You know that if you have a big model, it takes long time to load many times, right? But in this case, uh, the indexing is already done in the cloud side and filter is also the uh, done. So you are downloading only the element information which is needed to view. So it's much quicker. We have a way, model derivative API has a way to show element one by one by uh, specifying ID, but then the you know, question will be, how do we know those IDs? That's something you need to solve by downloading everything, but you can actually bypass those. And then, you know, once you have everything set up, it's uh, performance will be, you know, the remarkably faster. So if you are struggling with um, try to view in a big model or you want to get rid of all the unnecessary element, unnecessary means that uh, not directly connected to your work, then this will help quite a lot. Yeah, indeed. I think we can, there is just one question from, from Edgar before you move. Uh, Edgar, would you like to open your microphone or should I read on the chat window? Yeah, sure. Um, hi, everybody. Just a quick question. We're playing around here with some competitive tools as well, but I am Exodus and I, and I really like the Forge platform as a, as a whole uh, since, since its start. What I would like to know is like if I have a list of employer information requirements, like a door needs to have this, a window needs to have that. Can I have that? And I have this already on an Azure database. Can I connect the two and sort of make the two interoperable almost like how Mikako shows 
the, 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 the thing that I've already defined what, what we want to know from the door so that everything that's not compliant with what my client would like to see shows up red in Forge. So, Aaron, do you want to answer or? Yes, I, I can have a go at that. So, Edgar, did you say that the kind of compliance information, the requirements that you want to check the property data against, you have those in an Azure database, and what you yes. want to do is kind of run those? Right. Okay. So, I mean, you you could do that, and um, that's quite a good segue, I think, into how the um, uh, into a kind of you know little overview of the API that we could do now. Um, what you can do is kind of translate those requirements into an index query, and then run it against the um, property data for the for the models that you're interested in. So the models would have to be in uh, you know available via via Forge, so uploaded to ACC, for example. Um, but once they're in there, you can run the, the model, model properties API, convert your um, kind of requirements in, in Azure to a, an index, a property index query, um, which I'll, I'll kind of give a little bit of an overview um, in a second. And that would allow okay. you to kind of, you know, if you got back results or you didn't get back results either way, you could kind of, you know, determine whether that's passed the check. So that's, that would be an interesting use case, I'd say. It is, I think it's sort of a holy grail of information management at the moment. Like we have all these definitions of what the client wants to know, but there's a long feedback loop with the check, et cetera, et cetera, and, and to, to change that and to also prove it. Is, is that a manual check today? Uh, today it's, it's a, a bit of IFC open shell, a bit of dynamo and, and all sorts of stuff. But like I said, I, I've been coming into some of these uh, sessions, seeing what better has, has been doing, been playing around with the, uh, what is it? Node.js. Uh, but again, if, if there's an API, it makes it all a lot easier for me to make that connection rather than to pack it all together myself, because I'm not a developer. Mm -hmm. I I, th I think it's it's worth playing around with the the model indexing API to to kind of see if that if that will work for your your use case. Um, Augusto, I was going to say, should I kind of jump into showing a bit of the API now, and yeah. should we time box that at all? I mean, I don't want to kind of take over the session. Yeah, so um, go for go for it, and uh, we can stop you. But it, we we have until eight thirty. We have. Okay. Yeah, actually, I have, I have one quick question. Uh, it's a roadmap question. Now, something you pointed out was the data right now needs to be on BIM 360 or ACC. And there's future plans for supporting Forge buckets and OSS storage. Is that correct? That's interesting. We don't actually have that on our roadmap, but we could add it if there's enough kind of interest. I mean, yeah, that, that may be one to, to track. Claire, depending on the on the demand, because currently you you do need a you know an ACC project or a BIM three hundred and sixty project to use the API. Yeah, Michael, I think I I actually asked that question first thing <laughs> when I heard about it. I think the people just started to know this API, so we should correct a lot of feedback. You know, we should first use it in ACC and and then it, after that. Maybe Korea take it as a business case, and then how much we want to invest because uh, it it doesn't work as is. It's built on top of ACC background uh, backbone, so you have to think about the authentication and you know the projects and things like that. I mean permission, permission, and then projects. Yeah, so no, I. I think this is an interesting one. I hope a lot of people ask us to have it yes. you know, as a real one. But we will yes. see. At, as of today, nobody is using it yet. So we want to see you know, hundreds of thousands of developers making use of it and falling in love with this API. Yeah, Mikako, I did actually point a, a customer to this as a trial. Uh, yeah. Actually, it's also for Alan as well. Um, yeah. the, the getting started part is obviously not ready yet. That's it's it's it needs a little bit of um, what's the word? It okay. Needs a little bit more, a little bit more extra um, something there to to make it a little yeah. bit easier. It looks like we we work on it. I think yeah. I'll make it sure that even I can, you know, quickly work. <laughs> not the shout. We don't need a shout to help. 
Okay. Yeah. So just because of the time, let me move to Alan, uh, and then he can show what was his planning to. Yep. Okay. So this is the um, Forge API documentation for the Model Properties API. So this is what um, you're referring to. Um, so this this kind of first page, this landing page here, is the field guide, which is kind of an overview of the of the API. So it talks about you know what kind of things are what kind of projects are supported. We were we were saying that you need your data in ACC or BIM three sixty. Um, the permissions that you need to have on that data in order to um, you know access it via the index API, um, and it also goes into exactly what we give you in the kind of the workflows that you um, you know go through with these APIs. Obviously, this is quite advanced um, already, so that's a you know we we will look at kind of revising this, and maybe that's that's slightly out of out of order as the first thing you see. Um, so if I keep going down the page, it does show you here a screenshot of exactly what we're talking about, you know, with regards to model properties. I'm sure everyone is, is familiar with this, but, you know, for example, an IFC material has a, um, it is the category for this set of properties, and here's the name of one of the properties, metal, steel, you know, a bunch of things that I don't understand there. Um, however, that is one of the things that you can query out of the um, model properties API uh, using the uh, using the API. So if I go down here, there's a little bit more intro into each of the resources, and we may come back to this later. But I wanted to jump into the um, to to the tutorial tutorial around index querying. So this is actually how to interact with the API, um, how to construct a query, how to get the results. So this kind of gives you your you know one 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 shop process to to actually getting something. So the first thing that you need to do with you with your file is get the ID of the file, and you can retrieve that via um, via uh, the uh, document management API um, for your project. Then what you do is you ask the index service to actually generate an index. So what the index service needs to do in order for you to um, query the properties of your model is it needs to kind of create an optimized form of the of the model properties so that's what this is doing so that's the first step you you make the index service aware of your file and you say i want you to prepare this file for indexing what happens then is the index service kind of kicks that off and then a few seconds later if you call the same endpoint again you'll get back a status of um finished and that means that that um, file is now ready for querying so one of the things that you can do is download the manifest. There's a few resources that get generated. This is quite a, a kind of technical resource. If you need it, it shows you all of the viewables inside your file that we indexed, um, if you need that information. What we also provide you is a fields resource, which gives you actually all of the property types available in your model data. And what that consists of is a key that we've given that property the category that the property is from, the type of the data, and the name of the property. So for example, if I wanted to look at elevation properties on certain objects in my model, I would need this key, because this is what describes the elevation constraint, and um, the unit of measure here is feet. So that's, that's kind of specific to this model, but if I wanted to query that, I would need this identifier. You can also download the raw index, which is our optimized representation of the property data, but that would give you everything in the file. Normally what you'd want to do is you'd want to query specific, um, a specific part of that property data, a specific subset. So what you do is, is make this API call here. You'd, for your model, say, I want to run a query against it, and that query here is using our own query language. And there are more examples of this, but you know we'll just go over this one, this kind of simple example. It's where you're saying, I want to get the objects where the number of views against the object is greater than zero. So in other words, I want to get all of the objects which are viewable, they're in a view. So that will allow you to just get objects which are you know, actually assigned to a 3D view. The response from submitting that query is that you get back a, a kind of response with running 
And then it's the same process where you have to poll it um, until it's finished. And a few seconds later, you'll get kind of finished. Then you'll be able to download the um, properties resource with the results, sorry, the query results, which will actually be the objects which match the query. So down at the bottom here, that's exactly what we found. So these objects in this sample data all match the query. They're all in at least one view. Um, so this is kind of not selecting anything specific about, you know, the type of object, the type of, you know, elevation as, as an earlier example. It is just any properties which are in a view. And obviously that's a very simple example. What you can do is way more advanced things. Um, you can, like, like I was kind of alluding to, you can use the um, kind of equality expressions here to, to check elevation. You can say where elevation is greater than 100 feet. I want to get all of the objects. And that would um, potentially you know, satisfy one of the use cases that, that we'd heard about earlier from Edgar, if, if, if that was an example. Um, I'm trying to think of other examples. You can, you can query the level. I mean, all of the, the kind of things that um, Mikako showcased in Xiaodong's demo a bit earlier they would also be serviceable by this API. So that's a kind of, you know, whistle-stop tour. Um, and probably what we should add here are a few more examples of queries that you can write. I think there are a few down here um, because this is kind of the key thing. For example, um, this here is saying where my... I want to get objects where the materials and finishes category structural material is like steel. So that's one. So this will get back all of the objects that have the structural material that contains the word steel. So that's a kind of practical example of that. There's also one here around dimensions um, where the height is in feet and it's over 0.5 feet. So that's another practical example because that will get back all of the steel objects that are higher than half a foot. Alan, just a question on when you go to the previous step when you're indexing, you specify the URN of the version, right? Uh, yes. So now it's version four. Um, let's say update tomorrow version five. What happens? To if, if we update the version and you upload a new version and you want to index that, the index service has to be told about that. So that's how it works today. We won't automatically um, kind of listen to all of the files being uploaded and, and index them. Um, and there's no way to kind of tell it, okay, I'm interested in having a, a warmed up index for this lineage. You, you have to go and tell it today. Uh, well, lineage is the, is the item, right? But so uh, here we specify Sorry, yes, by item. version. Yes. yes. So we, we, we specify always by version okay so whenever there is a new version i have to index that new version um if i index the new version as soon as the version is uploaded but before the translation is done is would that work it wouldn't work because we 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 depend on the um svf data being available so as okay. soon as you can view it in the lmv we can index it but not before okay got it I think it's worth um, just mentioning very quickly as well. In the index data, we add stable IDs. So there is a, a viewing technology called SVF2. Um, it also offers um, ID stability across versions in the same item. Um, so if you were to upload in a, Augusto's example version 5 of the model file, if the object was the same object, you would see the same ID here through time. That, that SVF2 ID is the SVF ID, is the DBID coming from the viewer? Um, it's from, coming from, from, the the model, the S from the SVF. Is that stable between versions? I guess not, uh, if, if it may change it to is, the model. It, it is for um, SVF2, that, that's kind of why we put it in. We also have the, the DBID in here 
um, which we call LMVID. So that's the unstable oh. one. But we have an explicitly kind of stable ID that comes from the, the SVF2 viewing technology. And that, that does um, remain stable. If you have the same object and you upload a new version of the file, it will have the same ID. Alan, a question, if this moves to OSS storage, mm -hmm. um, will, will the SVF2 DBID be stable? I'm not sure about that. That that depends entirely on that's kind of an SVF2 question because the index service just consumes those um, you know, directly from SVF2. So we, we, we can kind of um, we can find the answer to that, but I'm not sure off the top of my head. Great. Thank you, Alan. Thank, thank you, Alan. Uh, let me just open for questions for you know um, non Autodesk <laughs> as well. Uh, we just have a few more minutes. I remember discussing with a few people before about this. Um, any questions? Well, I, I was curious again, Edgar here. Uh, how would I load the payload to Forge using my information requirements sitting on Azure? So that would be a kind of translation from your information requirements sitting on Azure to mm -hmm. our index query language. Correct. So, so that process, I think you'd, you'd have to write a bit of code in order to do that, um, you know, to translate that, because I'm not sure how it's specified at the minute, to that kind of, you know, JSON representation of the, the conditions that you want to run mm -hmm. against the data. Okay, fair enough. But if I have the JSON definition, I could pull it. Like if I use Postman or whatever, I could say, hey, this is my JSON definition, stick that in the payload and it says, show me all doors with a fire rating of an hour. Nice. Yes. Nice. Yeah, ex exactly. So so that's the, the kind of final step. So you, you first ask the index service, hey, I want to index this file, create an optimized sure. representation. Then you can ask it, I want, I'm interested in these objects, go and yep. find me the result of this query. Perfect. I'll give it a try, guys. It's very interesting. I've been waiting for this. Thank you, Edgar. Any other questions? So that was a very, very nice presentation. Thank you very much, Alan, for that. Thank you, Claire. And thank you, Mikako, for arranging them. Oh, yes. Yeah, my pleasure. I didn't do anything. I just... <laughs> <laughs> you did a lot. Thank that you. Was the, that was the best idea I had for years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that yeah, this is a long awaited feature. And uh, as usual, we'll be posting the recording uh, on, the, uh, uh, on the YouTube channel, as usual. And uh, the next coffee break, it's coming up in, uh, in two weeks. So same link, same time, March 9. And uh, I'll be posting the recording of today, share that on, on Twitter as usual. And uh, with that, just right on time. Thank you very much for coming today. Yeah. Thank this, you, Claire. Thank you, Alan. Yeah, recording will be very helpful. I think I will put the, put the link to this recording. Alan's explanation was very good. That's exactly what I'm saying. I, I can probably even put the back to the blog post. You know? mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. See you in two weeks. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 B